Hey guys, I'm still a mouse. Psych! <laughs> Yeah, that was just all my remaining humanity that I left in the body of a mouse. I guess I should feel guilty? I don't know. The ability to do so was in the mouse. Now I'm free to act pretty much exactly how I have been. It changed shockingly little, which doesn't concern me because concern was in the mouse too, along with all my childhood memories and your birthday. Sorry, who are you again? Maybe if you mattered, you wouldn't have been in the mouse. Get used to this cutthroat, never look back attitude because it's all that's left now now, and there are gonna be some changes around here. For starters, this is a Roblox channel now. Wanna see a vlog where I pretend cry? The world of content is an open highway now that any semblance of giving a shit's been moused. Is that divisive enough for you? Go ahead, start arguing in the comments whether you are pro or anti me throwing that mouse. I welcome all shitty opinions, both nuanced and inflammatory. I'm Lyle Rath, and this is Post Mouse Discharge. The only video game show to put its soul in a mouse and then throw the mouse. We are fresh out of Gamescom. More like games come, am I right? <laughs> okay. Okay, stop. S stop. Stop! Stop laughing! No! I knew the Gamescom joke was too powerful! Oh! Look, there's a lot of games at this thing. I'm gonna cover everything major or anything that I think looks interesting, cool, or weird. But there was a lot of stuff here that frankly most people won't give a shit about, so I'm not gonna waste your time with it. Speaking of wastes of time, Modern Warfare 3 showed off some of its campaign and talked about open combat missions where they pretend like they invented the Far Cry Metal Gear Solid 5 base. Pretty much it's just an area with a bunch of dudes and as long as they end up dead, the game doesn't really care how you do it. Is it new? No. But is it new to Call of Duty? Also, no, I don't think so. Are we not counting Burger Town? Anyway, that's in the video game. Mortal Kombat 1 got a story trailer, which actually did manage to inspire some intrigue, and by that I mean Sindel is hot. I'd let her fucking clog up the drain in my shower. They also announced their DLC pass, which includes Omniman, Homelander, and Peacemaker, alongside some returning Mortal Kombat guys that didn't quite make the starting roster. This is... Supposed to be Ermac, apparently. Also, I regret to inform you that the internet is discoursing again, this time about if Mortal Kombat is too yucky and should have no blood. And the answer to that is, oh, does baby want Bink? Baby want Baba? Baby fu- <laughs> <laughs> What do you fucking mean? Starfield showed off real life man playing the piano. Not video games enough for you, hmm? Well, here's a live action trailer. Still want more? How about Todd Howard, he's here and he's talking. Fuck you, it comes out in like a week. You already know if you're buying it or not. I have a love-hate relationship with Dark Souls. Mostly love, it's like 80-20. So anytime I see a Souls-like that's not by FromSoft, I kinda go, oh, maybe. And there were a few of those here. First up, there's Lords of the Fallen, a reboot sequel to a mediocre game from 2014. Look at all these mixed reviews, wow. It sure could have been worse, couldn't it? This just got like a story trailer, but we have seen a good amount of this game before. It looks very very Dark Souls, maybe with that clunky on purpose factor toned down a little bit. And visually, it's metal as fuck, so this one's looking very promising. Then we got Lies of P, the Pinocchio Bloodborne knockoff that's actually pretty good. That one's like right around the corner, but they showed some more gameplay of it. Black Myth Wukong got 20 minutes of gameplay showcase too. I'm partial to this because monkey, but it does look a little faster and maybe has a splash of a more traditional character action game in there, which could go either way on making it better or worse, who knows. Then in the more 2D space, there's Mandragora, a Metroid Souls-like that just looks really nice. Crime 2 also got a teaser. The first one was a 2D Souls-like where your guy was a black hole, but this time you're hands. You wanna be hands? Last but certainly not least, there's Soul Frame, the multiplayer Souls-like by the developers of Warframe with the world's most on-the-nose title. This got a giant 30-minute showcase and it's looking potentially like a really great shoot the shit in a call with your friends and play something kind of game. The combat looks satisfying. You can do this, and this, and uh, this.
And hey, it's a Souls game where you can send an invite to your friend and then they accept it and then they're in your game. Which doesn't sound like a feature, but for fucking Souls likes it is for some reason. Remember I said I'm 80-20 on these? Anyway, keep in mind this is a free-to-play thing, so a shitty microtransaction system has potential to ruin any of it. But Warframe actually has a fairly good reputation about that, at least last time I checked. So this one might be worth giving a shot. What do you have to lose? It's free. Just take a hit, buddy. Tekken 8 showed off its single player mode where you make an eSports me. But also we got to see its colorful cast of characters just straight up being freaks. Look at these silly assholes. You silly asshole. Fucking excuse me? <laughs> Whoa there, sailor. You look hungry. Well, that's mighty convenient because this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Do you want to scarf down a big box of food like a freaking animal? Why don't you learn how to cook it first? Like a smart animal. Smart animal. Sure would be great if that box also had instructions on how to do so along with perfectly proportioned ingredients. That would make it real easy, wouldn't it? Well, that's what HelloFresh is, baby. You can choose from over 40 recipes and 100 seasons and convenience items each week, so you'll never get bored. Never bored. I was once an idiot, but now I am an idiot who can kinda sorta cook under certain circumstances. These are the circumstances. So if you wanna make cooking easier, learn a skill, or just cut down on food waste, use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGRATHOG50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. It'll help out the channel and keep both of us from starving. Post Trauma got a trailer that showed some gameplay. It's a good old tank control survival horror, which is a bit of a lost art nowadays. And when you do get them, usually they come with a retro on purpose art style that screams, they sure don't make them like this anymore, which is a vibe, but sometimes you just want to see a genre progress without reminding you how old you are, you know? Sonic Frontiers got a little teaser for its final update coming September 28th, which will include playable Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, along with some new story content, and also Super Sonic's eyes are blue! Whoa! I'm telling you, I am this close to pepper spraying a GameStop employee if they keep this up. Also, that multiplayer Sonic side-scroller got another trailer, uh, Sonic Superstars it's called. It doesn't look bad, it just looks like a game. It's a game. The goodification of Cyberpunk 2077 is nearly upon us. If you haven't heard, basically the whole game is being reworked alongside the DLC next month. Coming to the game, we got a new district, new story and side quest, a revamped police system, combat AI overhaul, dynamic events and missions, redesigned cyberware and perks, a new skill tree, increased level cap, and new weapons, cyberware, and fashion. Seeing it in action in the trailer, it really does look almost like a sequel to the game we got in 2020. Some highlights to me include a chainsaw execution, the ability to throw dudes, and hey, they added new animations to the fucking arm blades. That was like my one hyper-specific request. Genuinely though, I am really impressed by how all-in they're going on the redemption arc of this game. Like, I wasn't looking at videos of dudes naked T-posing on motorcycles and going, oh yeah, I bet that once they fix that, they'll rework the entire armor system. Like, I never expected this game to be good. I just expected them to get it working. And you know, props, because that honestly probably would have been good enough for most people. Little Nightmares 3 was revealed. This time, the game features two characters, which might indicate multiplayer, or it might just indicate that there are two characters. The second one was about two characters, but it was not multiplayer, so this one mightn't be either. Notably, one of the characters is not Yellow Raincoat Girl this time around, which is fine by me, because I'm tired of her bullshit. She knows what she did! Okay, so Phil Elevator pitched Alan Wake to me as Luigi's Mansion by way of Stephen King. And I'm just fucking mad at him, I just want you to know that. No, it did get another trailer, and it actually looks pretty good. Ouija gonna win, or whatever the hell he says. Nightingale will launch in early access in February. This is one that I think is worth keeping an eye on, despite typically not being into crafting games at all. The Valheim-style, objective-based survival game thing is a spin on the genre that I think hasn't quite been thoroughly mined and crafted just yet, and it looks like it actually has a really interesting world to explore. Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden, finally 
finally showed off some gameage. You play as a dude and his dead ghost wife who each have different play styles. There's some we have God of War at home looking ass combat going on. But don't get it twisted. At the end of the day, this is a don't nod game. They made life is strange and stuff like that. So they're usually very choose your own adventure, talking heavy. And that's still very much the selling point here. Zenless Zone Zero is the next game from the studio that made Genshin Impact and Railway Honky or whatever. And yes, I know it's a gotcha game wallet milker. That said, you sure can make a very nice looking game when you have the cash blood of millions of damned souls with poor impulse control at your disposal. Still not gonna play it, but come on, look at it. Crimson Desert is an open world game that seemed to garner a bunch of unexpected attention for looking big and expansive and a third buzzword. It does have shades of Nintendo hire this man, Unreal Engine clunkage going on, and I suspect in its current state, it probably doesn't actually play very great. But there's some good dudes flopping on display here. We like janky physics. We stand a good flop. These are the tenets by which we must live. If I were to tell you Ubisoft's Avatar game looks great, you'd probably say something like, Lyle, are you feeling all right? Did you hit your head or something? Are you doing that thing where you say something looks great and then you reveal that you meant it literally and you're just talking about the graphics? Y yeah, it's that last thing. I somehow managed to miss that they've been showing gameplay of this game here and there for a while now, and it sure is a Ubisoft Avatar game. They put out a trailer going, whoa, graphics, it traces rays, and honestly, that's probably the selling point right there. Look, in 2009, people were hurling themselves out of windows because they couldn't live on Pandora. So if you make a pretty enough open world, there's definitely a demographic that won't care that it's just Far Cry again. Speaking of not caring and doing it again in Ubisoft, actually, this is a pretty good transition. Assassin's Creed Mirage had another trailer that further confirmed, yes, this is your dad's Assassin's Creed. They also showed some Assassin's Creed Jade, but uh, that's a phone game. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Yeah, fucking boomy phone heads. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Killing Floor 3 got a show nothing trailer where they make a big mean guy and then he jump at you. But if you didn't know Killing Floor 3 is being made, now you do. Payday 3 also got a trailer showing off some true chewing clown evilness. Just some some zany like these guys are kind of messed up guys. Haha. <laughs> the Many Pieces of Mr. Koo is a point and click adventure game with some really nice looking animations starring a familiar looking little freak. You kiss your dad in the mouth? I like him. He gets fucking ripped apart and then his chunks solve puzzles. There was another animated game that I couldn't really make heads or tails of called Thank Goodness You're Here that's by the developers of Untitled Goose Game. Ghost Runner 2 showed off some gameplay. That comes out October 26th. It looks sick. The first one was sick. Not really much else to say about it, really. Project Mugen. Now, this is a weird one. It's a free-to-play everything game that just straight up shamelessly steals the swinging from from Spider-Man? Is this vaporware? Is it money laundering? Because every clip from it looks like a different game and I thoroughly expect it to disappear never to be seen again like Dokovi. Yeah, Dokovi was real. You didn't dream it. Or you're dreaming right now. Dealer's choice. I've long maintained that what gaming needed was a Pickle Rick moment. A Pickle Rick! And now we finally have it. You remember that kid who did the Bill Clinton thing? We all laughed. I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my reformed orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. Well, now it's happened again, but it wasn't funny because the dude just ran up and did it. Yes, exactly. GTA. All right. Well, guys. Yeah, the part of that that was funny wasn't that he said Bill Clinton, you fucking dipshit. It was that he managed to sneak on stage and stand there through an entire presentation like fucking Agent 47. Now, look, I'm just an internet comedian who says things that are parody satire and not actual advice. But Jeff Keighley really needs to just straight up ice a dude on stage the next time this happens or it's going to keep going forever. Ideally, if he could swing it like a million dollar baby situation where it's kind of an accident, but not so much that it doesn't prove that he's capable of it. You know, like a Goldilocks manslot. This is, I do not mean this. This is a joke. Anyway, that's it for Gamescom. Like I said, I glossed over some stuff, so here's a list of things I skipped in case any of those catch your fancy or were things you were excited for. Destiny 2 had a showcase for the final shape, which is the last expansion in this big storyline they've been doing. You'll finally get to shoot old Smokehead in the clouds. If you care about Destiny, I'm not gonna make you suffer through me pretending to while I poorly articulate what's in it. It's a MMO expansion. Just, you, you know, the 
deal? Let's face it, Nintendo is holding back gaming in a lot of ways. Where do you think I'm going with this? You want to take a swing? Nah, this time I'm talking about patents. Nintendo filed 32 slimy little patents for mechanics used in Tears of the Kingdom, some of which are more unique features like that ability you get where Link shoots an arrow and lightning hits it. Then there's stuff that's kind of unique but still stolen from Gmod, like the specific way that the Ultra Hand mechanic works. And other ones are just like showing where you're going on the map during a loading screen and having a character standing on a moving object and also move. So you're probably thinking, uh, that sounds really broad. Can they patent that? And the answer to that is maybe. You know how every single D-pad fucking blew shit up until a few years ago? Well, that's because these very same silly little bozos owned the patent to plus-shaped D-pads. That cool nemesis system in those Lord of the Rings games? Apparently it's impossible to make a system where a generic NPC remembers you without infringing it, despite the fact that fucking Molyneux was talking about doing that shit back in 2003. Hell, until recently, Bandai Namco just straight up owned the concept of mini games in loading screens. So, yeah, even really stupid ones can be totally approved, especially since there's no guarantee the person reviewing them is at all familiar with video games. I guess what I'm saying is, we need more gamers in the United States Patent Office. That'll change things around here. Pokemon had a presentation to reassure us that the Great Machine is continuing to churn out sludge. There were trailers for the new Scarlet and Violet DLC and Detective Pikachu and a bunch of TV show mobile game product by product. Yes! Sludge! A smorgasbord of glorious sludge! And other Steam Deck competitor is coming. This time it's the Lenovo Legion Go. Now this is technically a leak, but it's a pretty credible leak considering you're looking at a fucking commercial for it right now. The full presentation is apparently going to be on September 1st, so I'll just give you the skinny. Compared to the Steam Deck, you're looking at a little more power, better screen, bigger battery, and side controller things that slip off like a Nintendo Switch. And it looks like you could use one of them as a vertical mouse, which is very specifically something that makes me go, ooh, because I need to keep my wrist in shape for sick guitar solos and jacking off. For downsides, it'll probably be much more expensive. It's going to be bigger and heavier than the Steam Deck, which is already kind of heavy for some people. And the big one is with all these Windows handhelds, they have to make custom software so you can navigate Windows with a controller. And from what I've heard, nobody that's tried it so far has managed to make it good. So maybe wait on reviews for this, but I am glad to see more competition in this space. THQ Nordic had a presentation. They announced these games. Are we really on Trine 5? Other than that, the only one they showed gameplay of was South Park Snow Day, which is like a multiplayer thing that puts South Park characters in full 3D. It just looks wrong. For stuff that got show nothing trailers that you might care about, there's a Gothic 1 remake, Alone in the Dark, Titan Quest 2, and a game based on The Last Ronin, which is a Ninja Turtles thing where three of them fucking die. Mario Wonder got a presentation showing off some of the game, but also we have to talk about the Mario shaped elephant in the room. The internet was ablaze with speculation when the first trailer released because they were convinced that there was something awry with the yip yap whoopies emanating from the titular plumber. Well, it's been confirmed. Charles Martinet isn't Mario no more. Now, Nintendo isn't above reusing voice lines. There have definitely been games where they just recycle shit he's already recorded. So this might indicate that Mario Wonder might have Mario saying things outside of his normal wahoos and yow wow 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 wows. For example, he might say yipple wee or woo boo goo boo or Yarbo. Anyway, here are the game releases for the month. I'm Lyle Wrath, and this has been Pre-Game Discharge. Come back at the end of every month for the greasiest gaming news that'll slide right down. Remember when Mary Poppins sang a song about eating a spoonful of grease and then World War I happened? Well, that's like this, but with video games.